The various PlayStation controllers are absolute classics. No matter which of the four PlayStation consoles you've got, it'll have come with a great controller. However, some people can't resist messing with magic, and today, we're going to tell you about some of the strangest controllers for the PlayStation. Let's face it, it's probably not the strangest thing you've ever had in your hand. If it's your first time visiting us, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the gamer, and ring that bell to become part of our notification squad so you never miss a video. But before we get into some of these strange PlayStation controllers, have you ever seen our friends at Crafty Hackers. They could probably craft a controller of their very own using a variety of materials, so check them out! <whistles> Without further ado, here are some of the strangest PlayStation controllers. Blue Slime When the PlayStation 4 hit store shelves all the way back in 2013, gamers went wild. They absolutely loved its DualShock 4 controllers. They were the latest in a line of great, well-made, and easy-to-use gamepads, which meant gamers loved the feel of playing on their Sony devices. If for some reason you didn't like the controller that came with the console, then it was okay. You could get one of the many other officially licensed controllers. However, one company decided it was going to do something which, while it looked kind of strange, actually had some history. Japanese peripheral maker Hori came up with something, and on first glance, it's the absolute weirdest thing. Hori gave the world of gaming a blue, slime-shaped PS4 controller. Yes, way back in November 2017, the company announced it was releasing this uh, thing. As well as being a very distinctive shade of blue, it's got a face, complete with a smiling red mouth. You turn it upside down to play and it looks bulbous and weird. It also costs the equivalent of $90, which seems like a lot, but it turns out somebody must be a fan because it's actually the follow-up to a slime controller for the PS2. Who bought it? Presumably fans of the Dragon Quest franchise, because the slime is a character from that game, but it's only available in Japan. However, if you really dig the series, then this is almost an essential purchase. It's pretty uncomfortable to use, though. Res Trance Vibrator there are some games which are great, but don't do anything that hasn't been done before. There are other games which are pretty unique, but end up with a whole bunch of games that rip them off. Then there are games that do something no other game does and are impossible to rip off. One of those games is Res, a game which came with a bizarre controller. This one is a little not safe for work, so if you're of a sensitive disposition, well, you've been warned. Earmuffs, kids. This is a special controller designed to go with the game that's a musical rail shooter. It's a pretty unusual game when you think about it. It only does one thing. Vibrate in time with the music which makes up Rez's soundtrack. Well, sort of. The idea behind Rez is that every shot you make adds to the game's overall soundtrack, so if you play it right, you'll end up with a buildup of sound and music, culminating in a massive crescendo. You know, it sounded awesome and it's never really been replicated. This worked well with the PS2's rumble function, but where it came into its own was when you factored in the vibrating controller. You placed it on or near to you, and it would pulse and buzz, building up the energy, tension, and excitement. However, rumor has it it was used for other more adult purposes, ones which it really wasn't meant for. Or was it? You can't help but think that UGA and Sega could have come up with a better name for their peripheral. Namco Jog Gone a lot of the controllers we'll be looking at today look a heck of a lot different from the regular controllers you'll get out from the box when you buy your new Sony PlayStation. However, there are some unusual, weird, and rare controllers that you might think were the same as the ones you'd already owned. The next one definitely falls into this category. At first glance, the Namco Jog Con doesn't seem too different from a regular PS1 controller. Only, it's black. However, look again and you'll see a weird round thing in the middle of it. Now, when we first saw it, we wondered what it was and why it was there. It turns out it's something that'll end up giving your gaming a bit of speed and not a little boost. Back in 1998, when this controller was released, Namco's big PlayStation 1 game was R4 Ridge Racer Type 4. Now, as with all driving games, or at least with driving games back then, the question was always about how to recreate the experience of driving using an average joypad. The Jog Con attempted to do that by literally putting a little wheel in the middle of their controller. It looked pretty bad, but the weirdest thing was it actually worked. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough that there was a follow-up for the PS2 of sorts. It turned out Namco's Ridge Racer 5 was also compatible with this weird controller, so people who had bought it for the PS1 ended up getting their money's worth. Wu-Tang Clan W Gaming is a big business, and it has been for many years. Bearing this in mind, it makes a lot of sense that a whole range of people, organizations, and brands have tried to muscle in and grab their slice of the pie. One of the weirdest crossovers between gaming and entertainment came back in the 1990s and involved one of the most iconic hip-hop collectives of all time. Yes, Wu-Tang Clan may not be anything to mess with, censored for YouTube. We think that's what they said. But in 1999, they moved on from the world of rap to the world of gaming. While the likes of Enter the Wu-Tang and Wu-Tang Forever may have been albums which put the likes of Method Man, RZA, Jizza, Ghostface, Killa, and the rest up there in hip-hop pantheon, 
Wu-Tang Shaolin style didn't quite do the same for fighting games. In fact, we don't wish to cast aspersions on everyone's favorite Staten Islanders. But as far as gamers went, it had a pretty cool soundtrack, but not much else. To be honest, asking Wu-Tang to make a fighting game is like asking Capcom to spit some bars, throw down a Resident Evil rap, yo. However, what it did leave gamers with was this cool W controller. Oh wait, it's actually really uncomfortable to use despite looking so awesome. Can it all be so simple? Well, yes. This was too simple, lacking a vibration function and an analog stick. It ended up looking futuristic while being primitive, and not in a good way. Namco Negcon After since the days of Pac-Man, the idea of converting an arcade game into something you can play in the comfort of your own home has been the dream of video game makers. Some arcade boards have worked well, and others worked not so well. However, the challenge has largely remained the same. How do you take a game which, quite often, has its own set of specially designed controllers and make it playable using a regular controller and joypad? It is a conundrum. Well, you'd think Namco, the people who gave us Pac-Man, Man would be the absolute experts in this. After all, they were one of the first companies to hit big with their coin ops, meaning they've got a big head start on most other firms. The company also gave gamers a theoretical head start with a number of specially made peripherals so people can get the best out of their games. One example is the Namco Neggon. While at first glance it looks like a normal controller with some weird sense of capitalization, it's not that simple. You see, inside this boxy handheld is an odd, unique feature. We can't think of anything else quite like it. You see, this controller has motion controls. Yes, back in 1998, if you wanted to play the PlayStation port of Cyber Sled, this was the way to go. While it initially felt like you were wringing out a wet cloth, in time, you'd end up getting used to the way twisting the controller would actually replicate steering a vehicle. It looked a bit clunky, but once you master it, it really was the only way to play. Palm Top Controller Dancing games are a massive deal. They're the sort of thing which can attract new gamers and even get people who otherwise wouldn't play video games to give them a go. It's this sort of crossover which is absolute gold for developers. If the games are made properly, they could become a smash hit that only few other games could even come close to matching them. However, we have a question for you. What if you really like dancing games but for some reason, maybe you have a disability which prevents you from doing so or maybe you just really hate dancing? What if you just hate dancing or are terrible at it? Well, someone came up with something which might quite literally change the game for you. Yes, if you want your on-screen avatar to get down and funky without having to actually get down and funky yourself, then these palm top controllers are just the thing for a not-so-hardcore session of Dance Dance Revolution. Back in the late 90s, this was the game that got people moving and grooving, and you can too without having to get up from your seat and get onto the dance floor. These little square things are designed to go on top of the palm of your hand, hence the name, and allow you to press the buttons which match up with the areas on the dance mat. Actually, Here's the thing. This is basically a miniaturized version of a dance mat. However, the big ones made sense, whereas these tiny ones are just a little bit weird. We aren't saying it's a bad thing, there's just something we wouldn't have thought about. Skateboard In some respects, gaming is a funny thing. While movie sequels are seldom better than the originals, and music artists usually reach their peak at some point in their first five albums, if they're around for that long, gaming franchises usually get better and better. Part of this is down to an improvement in technology, as with bigger and better consoles come bigger and better games, and part of it developers and designers honing in on what works and what could work. However, there are, sadly, some exceptions that prove the rule. One of these is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series. It was much better in the early years when the idea of a totally immersive skating game was fresh and pop punk was the hottest sound around. You guys remember Goldfinger? Oh yeah. Actually, does anyone remember Skate or Die? Die, 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 die. Anyway, the games became gradually less popular and they started getting worse. Now desperate times called for desperate measures and in 2009, game makers Activision had a great idea. Ping! Inspired by the various Wii peripherals, they decided PlayStation 3 gamers could become just like Tony Hawk by packaging the latest in the series, Tony Hawk Ride, with their very own skateboard. Well, sort of. It just didn't have any wheels. But it was shaped just like a skateboard. Unfortunately, that's where the comparison ended. It was very hard to use, broke with alarming regularity, and made gamers furious about a franchise which at least had a lot of residual nostalgia going for it. Worst of all, no one went around Ireland with a fridge or beat the Moldovian soccer team at tennis. Oops, our mistake. That was Tony Hawk. Remember Tony Hawk? Is he still alive? Chainsaw Survival horror is a genre which has become one of the biggest in gaming over the last 20 years or so. Cynical as it may seem, 
It sometimes feels like you can't move for gamers, which take the player into a world of horror, where there are limited resources and even fewer options. Despite a crowded market, one series of games remains the king of this. It's launched a series of films, both live action and animated, but it's the Resident Evil franchise that has become iconic across the world and maintained to Capcom's position as one of the great game developers. While there is always going to be some debate on the matter, we reckon that, if you were to poll Resident Evil fans about their favorite game in the series, number four would be mentioned the most out of all of them. The PS2 era game from 2005 is a genuine classic, and the opening level alone is enough to elevate it. However, while it was fun to try to rescue Ashley Graham from the clutches of Los Illuminados and their sort of undead cronies, Los Ganados, using a regular controller, peripheral makers Newbie Tech really came into their own with the controllers they designed for the game. It was shaped like a chainsaw, but not just any chainsaw. No, it was shaped like the frightening weapon Chainsaw Man attacked you with in the game. Totally gory, but almost kind of cool. Well, it was until you realized the controller was big, uncomfortable, and unwieldy, so you ended up putting it back on the shelf and playing Resident Evil 4 with a normal controller instead. And then just maybe scaring the hell out of your sister with it late at night. You know, whatever. Those were some really interesting controllers unlike anything we've ever seen, which reminds us of our friends over at Crafty Hackers. They're so crafty. If you like crafts and DIY, you should definitely check them out. They have an amazing video where they show us some incredible hacks you could make with recycled objects. Oh, they're making planet Earth happy too, how about that? Make sure you check them out and leave them a like. Click in the corner to watch. There you have it. What's your favorite weird PlayStation controller? Did we leave any good ones out? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.